In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Here at this church of Our Lady of the Mission, Our Lady of the Mission, rather, is an historic church, at least for me, for several reasons. This is the church I came to for my first day with Mary. It was actually here. I remember going to confession just where Father Joseph is there now. But more than that, this was actually my parish for some years. For three years I came here as a parishioner. And it was in this church, in this community, parish community, where I discovered what it meant, at least the beginnings of what it meant, to have Jesus in the Eucharist as the centre of my life. Now this is not meant to be a sermon about myself, but I'll just use my, myself as an example, since this is where it happened, of how one might come closer to our Lord in the Eucharist. I had met some other young people from the parish, uh, by God's providence, and they told me that they used to go to church every day. Now these people were 20, I was just 21, 22, maybe 23. And I thought, you go to church every day? I didn't think that was possible, unless you were over 60 years of age. It was a huge revelation to me that you could actually do this. And so I considered it and, and started to go. So myself and these two other young people were there in the little chapel over there, the sister's chapel, each morning for Mass, amidst the other people who were not as young as us. And we were there worshipping our Lord or trying to. And I kept it up for some time. It ended up that I had to change my work, hours of work, which thanks be to God were possible, so that I could get to the Mass here at 7 o'clock in the morning. And slowly, even though sometimes maybe I'd sleep in, sometimes I wouldn't make it on time, but it started to become habitual, in a good sense. A virtue is nothing more than a good habit. So I started to come to Mass habitually every morning here, and it wasn't like I just started coming to Mass and my whole life was changed and I became a saint. My sanctity took a little longer. No, I, I still haven't reached that either. People, before I entered, uh, entered a convent, or when people ask me about how I became a friar, they say, did you have a conversion? I said, I'm still waiting for it. But nevertheless, I started coming to church each day and without really noticing it too much, at first, God started working very much on me in a very deep way before I knew God you know I would pray and things but it's different when you pray at home it's a good thing to pray at home and it's a necessary thing you know St. Paul tells us that we must pray constantly at all times recognizing that God is, is with us and especially for us who are baptized and who are in a state of grace we have the Holy Trinity dwelling within us and yet there's something different something more when we have the Eucharist dwelling within us. And so come to, I'd come to Holy Mass and receive Holy Communion. And so I would start my day at work this way. At the time, for those of you who may remember me from the parish, I worked for Telstra. So I'd have to rush into church. I'd get there in my uniform. The, uh, the priest would celebrate Mass. And one of the advantages of, uh, of having the priest being able to celebrate Mass fast is that I could go to work afterwards. So the Mass would be about 25 minutes and then I'd have to jump in my van and do my Thanksgiving in the van. And I remember one incident, um, if, you, if you're from the area, there's a telephone exchange just around the corner here. And we had a meeting at the exchange at about 8 o'clock. So I was the first one there. And a friend of mine, one of my workmates came as well and he knew me, knew, me, knew that I was Catholic and trying to practice my faith. And he was a, a nominal Lutheran a non-practicing Lutheran, what, I'm not sure what, exactly what that means, but that's what he was. And he says, where have you been? Have you got here so early? I said, I've just been to Mass, I've just been to church. He looks at me, he goes, how often do you go? So I say, I try to go every day. And he looks at me even more strangely, we're about the same age. He says, but don't you think that's a bit much? Don't you think that's going overboard a little bit? And I wanted to laugh. And to tell you the truth, I can't really remember what I said, but I remember what I would like to have said. Uh, you know, when you, especially, I would have said, you know, like as a young man, if you meet someone and you want to get to know them, 
There's no way you can get to know them without spending time with them. Or when you're in love with someone, all you want to do is to spend the maximum amount of time with them. Why should it be any different with God? Why should we say, okay, God, I'm giving you one hour a week, and that's it. That's all I'm giving you, okay? You've given me life. You've given me eternal life. You've given me everything else, but I'm just giving you one hour. So going to Mass every day shouldn't be extraordinary. It should be ordinary. It should be the thing we all desire to do. And it was a, the question helped me to realize that. Helped me to think that, you know, sometimes I'd wake up in the morning. In fact, I could probably say every day I woke up in the morning. You know, I am, am I insane? I could sleep for another hour. But I'd force myself to get to church because at least I knew with my reason, even if I didn't feel anything, that it was the right thing to do and that I needed this. I needed to be daily nourished, to nourished daily rather, by our Lord in the Holy Eucharist. And so as, as time went on, I grew more and more to know Christ and, and in love with Christ. And not in the sense that, uh, you know, the butterflies that come in your stomach when you first meet your future spouse or whatever, that kind of love. Not those kind of feeling lovey-dovey kind of stuff, no. But, but a, a knowledge of Him, which allowed me to realize what He had done for me and what He does for me every single day on the altar comes down to be my food. It's a realization we all have to come to, we should all strive to come to. Because he doesn't just call us, who eventually he calls to the consecrated life of the priesthood, to come to him each day. He calls every Christian, all of us, to come to him. The greatest gift we have ever had is here in front of us on the altar in the monstrance, the blessed sacrament. He comes to us every day as food, as long as we are baptized, you know, we're part of the Catholic Church and we're in a state of grace. He asks us that we might receive Him so that we might be united completely with Him in the most sublime way that is possible this side of heaven. But do we, have we even considered that? Especially for the young people, and there's a few of you in, in, in the uh, congregation today. You know, we don't even consider, like I didn't consider it even a possibility for someone of my age to be spending my time going to church in the morning. It just didn't cross my mind. Yet we have to really consider the, the fact that if we've got time, if we have the opportunity, then we should be spending it with the one whom we love the most, or at least who we desire to love the most, certainly the one who loves us the most. If our duties and our state in life permit it, we should be seeking out ways of coming to the holy sacrifice of the Mass more often, to participate in that holy communion with God himself and with each other, which strengthens our communion with each other. We should really not seek to make excuses for not doing so. You know, can you imagine uh, we get to heaven and God says, well, how many times did you come to Mass? Says, well, I was, I've been alive 50 years, it's 50 times 52, like whatever the Mass is, 2,500 or 25,000, something like that. He goes, well, what about all the days in between? Look at all these days you had free that you could have come and I could have given you the bread of life. And you didn't. You know, some of the saints, I forget which saint it was, who said every communion we receive, obviously in a state of grace, adds to the extra brightness of our glory in heaven. Now we don't do it necessarily for that, to receive a reward, but because it's pleasing to God and we wish to be in union with Him. That's the whole point of our life. To find God, to know Him, and to become, to have a greater, more profound, stronger, deeper union with God, because that's what heaven is, perfect union with Him. As St. Teresa of Avila says, when we're sitting in front of Jesus here in the tabernacle, here in the tabernacle, or rather on the altar, it's the same as the saints in front of Him in heaven, it's just that we have the veil, we can't see His glory as they do, and of course the sufferings as well, which we must undergo. But it's the same God, can you imagine here on this altar now, there's God, all the angels and saints are here also. If we knew what happened here, if we knew what happened every day at Mass, if we could see the supernatural reality of the angels and the saints adoring God, this church would not be big enough. The cathedral would not be big enough. The world wouldn't be big enough to, to hold the people who wanted to come and adore Him. We, on the other hand, have the eyes of faith. There's not too many of us here who are mystics, myself included. We, can't, we don't see those things supernaturally. God wants us rather to merit we understand to a certain degree the truth of God. He's given us the faith, theological and otherwise, through baptism and through our study. And he wants us to come and acknowledge the truth 
of his reality, the truth of his love, that word that gets overused and abused in our society, but the true love which ended up in the crucifixion. No greater love has a man than to lay down his life for his friend. And he lays down his life every day, in a sense, now in an unbloody way on the altar, so that we may eat and that we may live. So I urge you, especially in this month of May, in this year of faith, that you may renew your faith in the real presence, certainly, but also in the Eucharist itself, in the sacrifice of the Mass, so that you might more easily, more readily, maybe more, even more eagerly, put an effort into coming to see our Lord each day, if possible. If not each day, at least a couple of extra times a week, especially to come to the Holy Mass and receive much more than we could ever give. We give possibly half an hour, an hour. He gives us infinite, eternity, everything. Let us not waste the time we have. Our time is very short. Before we know it, we will all be dead. Less than 50 years. I can't see any babies in here. Oh, there's a couple of young guys. Okay, 70 years down here. None of us in this room will be left. We'll all be dust. Unless some of you are so holy, you'll become corrupt. I don't know. But the fact is, is that our souls will be separated from our bodies. And we will be either there or somewhere else. So let us not waste the opportunities God has given us. Let us seek to go to Mass, to participate in that blessed sac- in that uh, holy sacrifice as often as we can. And let us keep our souls as clean as possible through the uh, sacrament of mercy, the sacrament of reconciliation, so that we may not be found wanting on that day of judgment, and that we might be able to be with our Lord, with our Lady, with our saint, with the saints and all our loved ones forever in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.